everyone. It's Kristen from Arizona. Um, I am going to be doing some, I don't know, playing around, experimenting today. Um, I like the idea of mixing two or three different techniques on one painting. Um, so I'm going to be doing some of that today and we'll see what we get. It'll be just a little bit of playtime. I got some new paints. Um, well, one in particular that I really wanted to play with. And uh, so this is what I do sometimes when I'm trying to figure out what color scheme I want to do. And it also gives you a good idea of how the paints are going to dry because they look a lot different when they're wet. So I just put my colors down and uh, I've let them pretty much dry. They're still a little wet. But this one on the end here is called Prussian Green and it is by Arteza. So I wanted to um, play with that a little bit today and see what it's like in a painting. So I've got some other greens in there too. I've got the Sour Apple by uh, Deco Art. I've got the Espresso by Craftsmart. Uh, this is Naples Yellow by uh, Artist Loft. Arteza Gold. Um, what did I say that was? That is not gold. That is espresso. I said, okay, never mind. Uh, uh, Arteza Gold and the Hooker's Green by Basics, Liquitex Basics. Parchment by Artist Loft. And then on the end, uh, Thalo Green, also by Arteza. And I was playing around with some, you can see the little dots there, of some coral, adding some coral to it. But that's why it's good to put your colors out on a piece of paper like this, because I decided I didn't like it. I like the original palette. Plus, I have enough colors. I have eight colors there. And what I'm going to be doing today to start off with is a flip cup with these colors. I'm not going to add any black or white because the uh, Prussian green is very dark and so is the phthalo green. And the Naples yellow and parchment are real close to white. So I don't feel like I need to add black and white. I'm just going to use the colors that I have and see what we get. So the first thing I'm going to do is a flip cup. Like I, like I said, I have a 14 by 14 canvas here. I have got my uh, push pins in and I have double stapled these corners. Uh, these were the linen canvases that a lot of us got that were, they were on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And the corners will lift up. So when you're pouring or you're varnishing or <clears throat> resining, those can, can lift up on you. So I just put an extra staple in the corner there. Uh, that was Christina Welch's. I gave us that idea. It was a good idea because then you don't have to worry about your corners flipping up on you when it gets too wet. So, um, okay, we're going to go ahead and fill our flip cup. Uh, I have silicone in five of these colors. The uh, Prussian green, the hooker's green, the sour apple, the Naples yellow, and the parchment. I've put uh, two to three drops of silicone, and I use, this is my silicone oil that I use, and I get that on Amazon. So, that's been my favorite so far. Uh, and so the, I did not put, it in the Arteza Gold or the Thalo Green or the Espresso, uh, mainly because the uh, the Thalo, I just wanted to have a, a solid kind of background color with that one and kind of would be like a black or a white. And then the Espresso and the Gold, the metallics tend to sell out on their own or uh, interfere with the other colors. So they get their own kind of uh, cell action going on anyway. So I don't need to add silicone to those when I'm doing all this other silicone. 
Um, all right, so I'm gonna do my flip cup. I'm gonna start off with the parchment. My paints are mixed one-to-one -one with Elmer's glue wall and paint, and then uh, doubled. I double that amount with Floetrol, and then thin them down with a little bit of Floetrol and water if I need to. 90% water, 10% Floetrol. Okay, so those are all, all of them are mixed that way. So I'm just gonna layer these cups up. And I think I'm gonna go with a light dark, light dark. Got the maples yellow, which looks like it wants to sink. Okay, I'm gonna add some of this espresso, which is a metallic. It dries like a beautiful dark brown metallic, really pretty. And then let's go with some dark phthalo. And let's see. Throw in some of the sour apple. I love the sour apple. Really pretty lime green. I don't know. I'm into the greens today for some reason. They were calling my name. I don't have a lot of greens on my wall anywhere. I have green and stuff, but not something that is like green is the theme. So, okay, and this is the Prussian. Uh, this cup, I believe, is a nine ounce cup. And to cover a 14 by 14, I'm going to fill it up to almost uh, three quarters of the cup. All right, so let's start over with the parchment. It looks like I have a lot of parchment in this cup. So I'm going to go light this time with the parchment. This is the hooker's green. I don't think I got any gold in there on the first time around, so let's get some gold in there. This is the Arteza gold. Really like that one. It's really pretty. Uh, let's go with the phthalo green. And then some Naples yellow. When you're layering these up, they don't have to be in the same order. Uh, I'm just trying to go light, dark, light, dark. So a little bit of that. Espresso, got the yellow, the hooker screen and the, yeah, the hooker screen and the uh, Prussian green are hard to tell apart when you're doing them. The hooker screen is a little bit lighter. I want to go with a little bit more gold. A little bit more of the Prussian green. And I think we're good. Okay, so there's my flip cup. Oh, that's a lot of paint. I did spray my cup with the... My push pins are not even... I don't know why. I'm gonna grab a stick or two put out of there. Anyhow, I sprayed my cup with the 
I always say it wrong. <laughs> Let's get the letters backwards. WD-40, the silicone spray, so that all the colors would come out. It also gives you a little bit more cell action. Okay, that's better. So I just stuck a couple sticks under there, level that out. And this is, I'm just going to do a basic flip cup on this one and uh, tilt it around and see what we have and then we'll go from there. I have a balloon uh, here sitting here waiting. It just so happens, it's pretty funny, I grabbed out of the package and I grabbed green. So <laughs> I have a balloon in waiting in case we want to smash something. And I have a straw and I have my um, palette knife in case I want to do something with those, do some swiping. Get my other glove back on here. Okay, all you can see, all the, co all the color has drained out of the bottom. You can, it's clear now. So I'm just gonna slide and then flip. And this should be plenty of paint. Cover my corners. I'm going to use my Prussian green if it doesn't quite cover my corners. And I don't want all my cells out at the very beginning. You can already see I've got quite a few there. Um, I'm going to let that spread for a minute. But I don't want to stretch the cells out too much. So I'm going to move it around first and then I'm going to Give it a torch and then I'll finish spreading. All right, let's give it a little. Because I don't have a base coat down, I might lose some of those cells because they might fold over on each other. They probably will fold over on each other. Come back to the center, and then I'm gonna to go to this other corner over here. Go ahead and go off that corner. I'm gonna go back to this other corner here. Go ahead and go off that corner. Some really cool cells going on. I don't think I need to torch at this point. I'm just going to keep I'll move that back paint back to the center. You can see. Uh, always make sure that you have your paint back in the center. I'm going to head off to this other corner. I don't want my cells to get too messed up, so I'm moving slowly. But using that hand like that, the cuppy hand we call it, um, you can keep your cells that were moving towards that corner, you can keep those. Okay, let's move down to this last corner. Let's move the paint back to the center. I think the colors were pretty well Pretty even. That uh, sour apple is really popping out. But remember, there's metallics in here, and this is going to dry darker. These greens are going to dry darker. All 
All right. So that looks pretty cool by itself. But to me, it just looks like a basic, you know, background that you would embellish. There's lots of cells going on. I think I'll torch it a little bit, but I don't wanna get too many cells, too many more cells. I think this parchment here is gonna sink a little bit because it's heavy, it's like a white. Get a white torch to get some air bubbles out. Yeah, we're already starting to see some. Okay. Now what I wanna do is, I think I'm gonna take a small, a smaller cup, four and a half or five ounce bathroom Dixie cup, and I'm gonna layer the colors up again and we're going to do a, hang on, I want to get this corner. I'm going to do a dirty pour over this. corners. Yeah, because this is cell mania. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do when I do the dirty pour is I'm not going to do cells. I'm not going to put any silicone in. So I'm just going to layer them up in the cup straight from the bottles. I have, uh, there is no silicone in my bottles. When I want silicone, then I just have my cups like I do here. So let's go. I, I thought I had a lot of parchment in there, but apparently I didn't. I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but move that up a little bit. So let's go with some parchment, some of the Prussian, Naples yellow, phthalo green, um, some of the gold, and some of the brown. Got that mixed in there just layered layered up a cup and I'm gonna squeeze uh, now I want to make sure I want to pay attention to uh, where I want to go with this and I did not put all my colors in there on purpose because I wanted some darks and some lights because I feel like there is a ton of that sour apple and the lighter green the hooker screen going on here so I just put the lights and the darks in the cup. I have the parchment, the, the espresso, the phthalo green, the Naples yellow, the gold, and the Prussian green. And I'm looking at these veins that are, it's kind of uh, got some lines already running through it. So I kind of want to pay attention to that because it's already, there's already a design going on. I don't want to just throw the cup on And I'm not really liking this blob here. 
that may change as it dries, but I think I'm gonna try and cover some of that up. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna start off the edge of the canvas here and get, and get a ribbon going. I'm gonna go back over that because that was mostly brown. Tilt it a little bit. Let some of that paint go off the edge. Okay, not sure how I'm feeling about this about right now, <laughs> but I don't think it's scrape time yet. See what's going to come out of the cup here. That will make really pretty cabochons. I don't know if you guys can see that in there or not. Um, I don't think I want to put any more paint on this. I feel like it's too, there's too much going on. Um, and I'm not crazy about this brown through here. But again, I have to remember it's gonna dry darker. So let's put some the parchment down, a little bit of Naples yellow, just 
some of that phthalo green. And where did my balloon go? Okay, so I'm just gonna dip the balloon. Ew. Actually, that's kind of pretty. Let's do a couple more. I like that the phthalo green um, is kind of a blue green. So I like that it uh, got some, I got some blue. Sorry, I'm trying to work and think at the same time. It's really hard. It hurts my brain. Let's go with some gold. And let's try a dip there. Pretty. I may have to come back in, in, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour and re-dip these balloon dips because sometimes they don't stay. They don't stay where you put them. I want to dip that one more time because there's a lot of paint in that center. So I want to pick some more of that up. Messy, messy. Try not to mess up my little puddle that I've got going on there because I have my cabochons out. I'm going to do some dipping because I'm out of, running out of green ones. Okay, let's do another one. I wanna follow, I'm gonna follow this line up here. That was just some uh, phthalo green and Naples yellow. Trying to decide if I want to, I think I'm going to dip that one again. Get rid of some of that paint in the center. My balloon, I have found that I don't blow it up very big. I like it to be small on the smaller side so I can grip it in one hand. And uh, not so full. Let's go. Up here in the corner. I'm going to go with the gold this time. Yeah, and I might I might come back in here in an hour or so and re-dip those because that paint was really thick and that ribbon in, in the middle. All right. Well. I like 
this and I like the flowers going up the middle. I'm not crazy about this. It's not too much going on here. Um, I could always, you know, take some of that out later. But let's see. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do some more flowers, dip some more flowers in there, or swipe. I might swipe that section just to get some, uh, I'd like some darker, some of the darker phthalo green in there. I have little pieces of it here and there, but I want to give this a little bit of a talk. Now remember, I didn't put any silicone in the, the lines, the dirty pour that I did. So that'll be nice with the flowers because the flowers are getting a little bit of uh, the silicone from underneath coming up through. Um, and then the, I, it kind of looks like a vine of flowers. So I'm thinking, hmm, ugh, decisions, decisions. I don't like it when there's too much balloon dipping. I like to keep the flowers simple, but I think, you know, a couple more over here would be cool. And then I don't have to swipe that because I'm not, this isn't horrible over here. I do feel like I would like to add some phthalo green in there somewhere. Sorry about the background noise of doing yard work next door. Mm. I don't know. I am totally confused. Going back in with some phthalo green, just following some of those lines. And then I'm going to balloon dip over them. Yeah, come back, bud. That was really lucky. I want to 